forgave us on the cross because, as he said, we know not what we do. Now you might ask, how can we be accountable for anything if we don't know what we're doing? And that goes to the root of everything, I think, which is honesty. Because even if you're messed up, even if you don't know what you're doing, you can be honest about the fact that you don't know what you're doing. So then the question becomes, do you, one who does not know what you're doing, are you responsible for figuring out and making sure you know what you're doing? And in the world, to a certain extent, that's basically what we're taught. You're a child, you're given more leeway, and as you grow up, you become more responsible. And that's true as far as functioning in the world. But as far as functioning in your relationship with your God, that is something that can't be reconciled by your work, by your action, by your repairs. You're the fallen, broken one. And so is everyone else around you. So no one else besides the Creator, the one who designed you to function a certain way, can restore you to that. So you have to be honest about your plight. You have to be honest about your condition. You have this fallen, broken nature that you share with every other human being. So you're not going to fix this. You're a broken person. So that's where the honesty comes in. So I can come to Him and as an act of accountability saying, have mercy on me. I know I don't know what I'm doing. I, I know that I'm broken and fallen. But before that, he can't really do anything. And it's not because he can't, as in he's not able. It's because we're not letting him until we acknowledge this. We simply need to acknowledge our plight, our situation. I'm responsible for the fact that I'm a human being. It comes with certain realities. I didn't create all the realities, but it also comes with certain blessings and opportunities. The opportunity to know my Creator supersedes or it overwhelms all the negatives. It really does. So it's not a matter of me being able to say, well, I had this terrible childhood, these awful parents, this one teacher or, or supposed friend who abused me and bad culture and I was in a terrible religion and a bad church and mean people or mean school. None of that. It, it, it can be true. I understand that. Those things are real and those things are true. But the Creator is still greater than all that. And that's the thing you got to struggle with at some point. If you really think that you are operating at a disadvantage. If you think you're operating at a disadvantage, you are basically saying that your victimizers, your bad circumstances, your whatever is greater than your creator. Their, their weakness, their flaws, even their evil and bad intentions maybe, is greater than the kindness and the effectual love of your God and Creator, Jesus Christ. That's something you should think about. We should all think about it and struggle with it. Because you can't just snap your fingers and believe that. It took me a long time to get over certain things, certain unfairnesses that I perceive and maybe even are true and will never be made right. Because let's face it, when someone has harmed you, there's likely nothing they will ever be able to do to correct that, to fix that, to to make that good, so to speak. People can try and do their best, but you can't take away what's already happened. You can't make it as though it never happened. And that may have been traumatic. It may have been something that lasted with you. So I just ask you to consider, because I found out, because I considered, that there is something that truly takes that away right here in this life. It doesn't mean that I don't remember those things, and I might even flinch a little or wince when I think about them to the degree that I get to know him and understand him that flinching and wincing will dissipate it'll diminish it'll go away little by little as I see him more clearly through seeking his face so it's not a matter of taking account of every wrong thing you've ever done and then 
asking God to forgive you. Neither is it saying you're not accountable. It's recognizing the fact that he was willing to be totally accountable for you. He was willing to take all accountability. And once you really see that and you believe that, that does something to you. I mean, when you understand it for what it is, it doesn't, as, as religious types will tell you, it doesn't make you just say, oh, well, now I just get to sin and sin and sin. Oh, golly gee, lucky me. I get to do whatever I want to do, whatever horrible things I want to do, because God has accepted accountability for all of my sin. It's already forgiven before I, you know, that's just nonsense. It's childish. And people who think that, People like my wife and I, who understand His mercy, who understand His grace, who understand that His forgiveness is once and for all, think that that's what we want, is some sort of secret life of sin, or excuse to sin. They're just immature. They're just childish. They just don't get it. Because once we saw that, He did that. He was not only willing to do it and able to do it, He went ahead and did it. Even though as a man, it was difficult for him. His, his flesh struggled against it. Nevertheless, your will be done, he said. And he went ahead and he went through with it. Now that we see that clearly, it causes us to trust in him. Trust in him. Not in our own efforts to be obedient. Our efforts are not towards making sure we get all the sin out of our life. Because that only makes us focus on our sin. And sin increases. Paul made that clear in chapter 7 of Romans. So it's what do you focus on? I focus on my God. I focus on his kindness. I focus on his love and his mercy. And that doesn't make me feel guilty and ashamed so that I can now try to please him after all he's done. It just doesn't work that way. We don't function that way. That's not how we operate as human beings. I see it. And I believe it. And it changes me. Because this is not some religious exercise. This is not some intellectual exercise. This is a supernatural event. When you really understand what your God has done for you, it changes you inside your heart, your soul, your mind. It makes you a new creation. The new creation is a new creation. Or you're not born again. You are not like you used to be. You are. Are a new creature. The old things have passed away. The old man is dying. Your flesh is still there, yes, but you are this new one who sees things differently when you really know and understand what he did. When he chose to be accountable on your behalf, that in a rational sense, spiritually speaking, because I understand religion will say that that's irrational, but rationally speaking, as a spirit-filled person, I see it makes sense to trust him and not myself. I know a lot of these messages are implied in religion. It doesn't say trust yourself over God, but it teaches you to trust yourself over God because it says, well, God has something you want. He has the ability to bless you or curse you. So make sure you're obedient and you'll get the blessings and you won't get the cursings. That's the message of conventional religion. Make sure you're pleasing to Him. How? According to what you do. You will do these things. You have these commands, these orders, these instructions. And then you will be pleasing to Him. And He will bless you and not curse you. Whereas when you see that He looked at the situation and said, They'll never obey me. They can't obey me. They don't have it in them to obey me. So I will obey perfectly on their behalf. And the ones that see that and trust in that, will be changed because then I will be able to restore what I have with Adam in them. I will be able to come and dwell within them, never to leave again. And when you have the Spirit of God living in you and you know He will never leave or nor forsake you, you don't have to fear, which is another thing religion implants in us. It implants fear. But fear has torment. That's what that's about. Love casts out fear. Perfect love. That is Jesus himself casts out fear, casts out religion, casts out the accuser. That's what he does. And the spirit of religion is the spirit of the accuser. It's just true. 
And if you've been to any church system, you know it's true. It's all about condemnation. No matter how subtle, ultimately you will be condemned in any religious system. We came here to condemn religion, to reveal religion for what it really is. It's not about getting to know God. It's about getting to know yourself through so-called obedience and works of righteousness, which are all filthy rags. You have a God. He gave himself for you. The more you understand that, the deeper you get that into your being, the more you will desire to be dependent on him. And you will seek that heart that, that really wants to trust him, that really wants to let go of trust in self and trust in your own wisdom, your own ways. You will want to let go of all of that and simply be with the one, the only one, who can change you from inside because all the rules, regulations, commandments, and religion is all external. The only one who changes you truly on the inside is Jesus Christ, your Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.